today we are going to do a lodging inspection. We are at a hotel and we are going to be looking at guest rooms and laundry area and vending and storage closets. And we're just going to see each piece of a lodging inspection and hopefully give you helpful pointers on how to carry out an inspection when it's your turn to do one. First of all, we need to make introductions and get somebody to walk with us. Good morning. My name is Jennifer Moore. I'm with the health department and I'm here to do your inspection for the lodging facility. Is there someone that could assist me, maybe walk with me? Yes, I can get somebody to assist you. That'll be great. We are also going to need a list of uh, unoccupied rooms. They can be clean or dirty, but I definitely want to see some clean ones if they're available. And we'll need somebody that can get us into the locked areas like your storage closets. Um, also going to look at laundry and vending as well, so just all those little pieces of the inspection. So your assistance would be greatly appreciated. Okay, one moment while I generate a room report. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. So we're going to start our inspection. We have a list of rooms that are supposed to be unoccupied from the manager downstairs. And we're going to knock first just to make sure there's not been a, somebody check in that the list didn't capture from the computer. Housekeeping, just make sure nobody answers back. And let's go in and get started. So we are in the guest room and we are going to assess the furnishings and the physical facilities here. There are two beds, we'll look at them in just a minute. First of all, I want to look over here at the furniture, the heat and air unit, we've got a lamp, so we've got a lampshade, light bulbs that we want to make sure are operating and, and general cleaning here of these furnishings. This chair, you know, you want to see if a cushion comes up. Is there anything to look under? There's not here. So we're really just looking at the chair itself for cleaning and being in good repair. And then we have a heating and air unit here. And you can often, you are the maintenance person if someone's walking with you, and they should be. We are, of course, doing this as a training video, so I do not have a maintenance person with me. But you can look at these filters and see if they are being cleaned regularly, if they're in good repair, and then you replace them as you found them. Let's see if I can do it properly. And let's see, we'll look over here on this wall. Also, while you're walking and looking, you are assessing the physical facilities, the floors, the walls, the ceiling, you're observing all that while you're looking at other things as well. So in here, these look very nice. We've got another chair, just looking for uh, clean and in good repair. We have a desk phone, which is kind of, might be a little unusual, they're becoming sort of obsolete. But you can always look, you've got a flashlight, usually shining a flashlight on these headsets uh, will show or these receivers will show you if there's dust or possibly grease from someone's hair or skin where they're not being cleaned very well. Uh, this lamp is operating as it is and we are gonna look over here at the dresser drawers, storage drawers, and just looking for clean and in good repair here. And these are considered furnishings now. This is part of part of the room, the furniture in the room, and those were clean and in good repair. We've got a storage cabinet here, sort of like a closet. You open that, and there are a few things in there from the filming crew. <laughs> and that is this side of the room. We've, we've gone around the wall and the corner, looked at floors, walls, and ceilings while we were here. Uh, I would say even pictures on the wall. You wanna make sure that you check them for dust, general cleaning, and that is the assessment of the furnishings of the room, except for the beds. We'll get to those in just a minute. Before we look at the beds, I want to remind you to take a look at window treatments, window uh, shades, blinds, curtains that you may have in a guest room, and you are looking for these to be kept in good repair and clean. And this, these are just shades that can pull with these chains, and we're gonna raise them up to get a little natural light in here to look at the beds. but you don't want to forget to look at those as part of the furnishings. Now we want to look at the beds. We need to look at how these beds are made, how the sheets and the bed coverings are put back on the bed after cleaning. You need to remember that lodging facilities are not required to clean their 
bed spreads, comforters, duvets between guests. So that bed covering, that, that top part of the bed does not have to be cleaned between guests. So we're gonna look over the bed just for general cleaning, looking to make sure there's no hair, um, nothing that would seem to be dirty here. And let's pull back and look at the sheet. This sheet is folded down quite a bit. There is a top sheet and there is a bottom sheet. You'll remember in the rules, there's mention of folding a sheet six inches at least over the bed covering. And we did not have that here. That is because the management has explained to us that they clean these bed coverings between guests. So they do not have to have this sheet folded over the bed covering. So what you saw was the bed sheet is folded back but this comforter did not have the bed sheet over it. And that is okay because these comforters are cleaned between guests. On this side, we have a little different view. This sheet is folded down over the comforter because if the comforter is not cleaned between guests, that is where your six inches, the top sheet folded at least six inches above that comforter is important. And you need to talk to the management, housekeeping, talk to the people that are walking with you to make sure you understand how they clean or how if they clean the bed coverings so you know how the sheet should be when you look at the bed. Both of these beds have a top and a bottom sheet. The bottom sheet is folded under as it's supposed to be. Same thing here, we've got it folded under. I think that's actually the top sheet. So let's look and make sure there's the bottom sheet. So they are folded as they should be. And we're gonna look, we just wanna throw that back. And we are looking again for general cleaning. So are the sheets being laundered because the sheets are to be cleaned between guests. So you don't want to see hair, dust, dirt, stains, um, even possibly things that sound kind of gross like blood or other body fluids. And you might see that sometimes. And you want to be careful when you are pulling back bed covers. Uh, there have been instances where <clears throat> sharp things have been left in beds, things that could be hazardous to your health. So as an inspector, you just want to be careful and mindful of where you are putting your hands. I'm going to pull that out as well. That's the bottom sheet. We want to look at the pillows and the pillowcases. Also looking for uh, hairs, any signs of staining or not being cleaned well, and opening up the pillowcases to look at the pillows. Also important, make sure that the pillows are in good repair. And you should have a housekeeping person walking with you because as you are pulling apart this bed, they are gonna need to know that it needs to be put back. And sometimes we feel bad, like we feel kind of funny about taking apart somebody's work, but it's important for you to do that in a lodging inspection so you get a view of what they are actually doing when they make this bed. So let's turn back these covers and let's talk about the mattress for just a few seconds. We want to actually pull the sheet and the mattress cover back. And let's see what we have here. We're looking at cleaning, good repair for these mattress covers. We want to lift the mattress and look under, but I want to warn you, you need to be careful when you're sticking your hands here. You want to be, be very aware that there could be things under the mattress that you wouldn't expect. <laughs> but you want to lift up the corner and just look again for cleaning and good repair. And that looks good. And I've pushed the mattress off. Now, thinking about the floor under the bed, we want to be aware, are we dealing with a solid uh, box type setup under these beds, which we are here, solid. And sometimes you'll see open area under the bed, not a solid box. And then you're gonna wanna get down there and look and see about the floor cleaning. And even with the box, you wanna see, are they cleaning close to the box? And let's look up here Next at the pillows, we've already talked about the mattress and the sheets, the pillows, kind of the same thing. We wanna make sure that they are clean and in good repair, not stained, not ripped. And we actually wanna take off a pillowcase 
And let's look at the actual pillow. Make sure that they are in good repair and that they are clean. So there's one. And just use your flashlight. Just looking at the surface of the pillow. One thing I will add about the mattress and the mattress cover, you might be asked how to look for bed bugs. You might have a complaint on bed bugs and need to know where to look. You want to be aware that the bed bugs often will be along the tiniest little spots of the mattress and I, this cover, I am not able to open it up, but you can look along the edges of the box springs and just see if there is any sign, any little blood spots, any little tiny, tiny dots. And you might even end up with a headboard that will come off the wall. This one will not, but sometimes the headboard will come off, pictures will come off the wall, and sometimes you'll see signs of bed bugs around the holes where there are screws or bolts to hold these furnishings in place. So you just wanna be aware those are some places to look for any bed bug activity. And that is a look at the beds. Let's look at our area where guests can fix their coffee, have some ice, refrigerator, microwave, our little food area here, and just be aware that these things are considered equipment and we want to make sure that there's good cleaning going on. We wanna look inside the microwave for any uh, dirtiness and even lifting the microwave up to make sure underneath is being clean because this is part of our storage and area for equipment. We've got a refrigerator, looks clean in there. Again, just looking for good, good repair and cleaning. There's not a requirement for a thermometer in a refrigerator here in the guest room. We've got an ice bucket with a liner and cups. Let's look real quick at the cups individually wrapped so these are single use the intention is to dispose of these after they're used and then we've got the ice bucket which with the liner is considered a non-food contact surface utensil these are to be kept clean but there is not a requirement for cleaning and sanitizing between guests if there was no liner and the ice bucket is the food contact surface or there is a lid that could be a food contact surface then there's a requirement for cleaning these between guests. And I'd like for you to remember they can clean them in this guest room. If they choose to do that, the sink in the guest bathroom has to be sanitized before they tackle cleaning a food contact surface in that sink. So there's a, a little bit of, uh, you have to figure out where they need to go with that ice bucket. Does it need to be cleaned? Or is there just an expectation of it to be kept generally clean? So you wanna pay attention to the liner and what they do with that guest sink if they need to clean them in that sink. Coffee maker, we've got single use cups, single use K, uh, K pods, coffee pods for the machine. But we still wanna look inside. Again, a general expectation that the equipment is kept clean. So if there's any parts that will slide out, <laughs> I'm gonna try to slide that out. And we're just gonna look and see just about the general cleaning. Again, not a food contact surface, not a requirement for cleaning and sanitizing, just more equipment here in the little food area of the guest room. And also checking out the counter and your floors and walls. Let's move into the guest bathroom and look at the fixtures in here and evaluate what needs to happen with them. We have a vanity and sink, a toilet, and a shower. These are bathroom fixtures. These are to be cleaned and sanitized. That is the requirement in the rules for bathroom fixtures to be cleaned and sanitized between guests. You will see that there's soap, individually wrapped soap, clean towels, that is required in the guest room. There is toilet tissue. There is a requirement for toilet tissue in the guest bathroom. Let's turn on the water. And here I am looking for water to be present, for the fixture to be in good repair, for the plumbing fixture, for there to be good repair and um, no leaks, no signs of any damage underneath. Also, when you are looking at these rooms, you're gonna 
want to always be evaluating the floors, the walls, the ceiling, physical facilities still count in the guest bathroom. You will notice I did not check a temperature of the hot water or the water because there is not a hot water temperature requirement in a guest bathroom. So be aware of that. You do not have to look for a certain hot water temperature in your guest bathroom. Let's look at the toilet. And I'm just gonna tear off a little piece of tissue. We're gonna look for general cleaning, even around the base, the seat, the bowl, all parts. Just good cleaning. And then let's flush it to make sure it's working. Okay, let's move to the shower. And we've got a shower curtain, which is considered an accessory. And we are looking for that to be kept clean and in good repair. We have an attachment that holds shampoo, conditioner, and shower gel. These do not easily come out or move around. So we're really just looking at that attachment that these are clean and in good repair. And I will pull the shower curtain back so we can look at this side. We've got the tub, again, looking for cleaning and, and good repair. And then the parts of the shower, the shower head. We wanna shine a light up there and make sure that we are checking for a good general cleaning, that we don't see any uh, microbial growth. And same for your spigot, your faucet, just general cleaning and in good repair. And this bathroom looks really good. Let's talk about lighting requirements in lodging facilities. In the rules, there is a requirement for at least 20 foot candles of light at 30 inches above the floor in toilet rooms. And we are in the toilet room of the guest room and we're gonna check the lighting. We want to use a light meter and we're gonna put the sensor where the light can hit it and try not to block that. And we'll see how many foot candles we have. We are at 79 to 83, they, those Numbers are fluctuating as the light is fluctuating hitting the sensor. You want to make sure you use a light meter and not just guess because you think a room is dim. You want to actually use a light meter and get a reading. And again, remember, we are talking about toilet rooms in the lodging facility where the requirement is at least 20 foot candles, 30 inches above the floor. We are in the hallway of our lodging facility and we want to stop and look at the physical facilities in this hallway. We've got floors, walls, and ceiling to evaluate for cleaning and good repair. And then we've got a heating and air unit, and we're gonna pull out the filters and check them out. Sometimes you will see a little bit of dust come from them. That's the nature of the beast there. They are intended to capture dust and small particles, but you, want, you don't want to see caked on lots of accumulation of dust and, and dirt. We've got a window covering here a shade that we can pull and just check for cleaning and good repair. And that is pulling up as it should. That looks good. And I'm going to put it back like I found it. And then we've got a stairwell. And you want to remember the stairs are a part of the inspection. It's part of the physical facilities. So when you come into a stairwell, you might want to walk down and up a little bit and just check for cleaning and good repair of your rails your actual steps. We're just checking physical facilities again. So let's look at the vending area of our lodging facility. First of all, we've got physical facilities to evaluate. Floors, walls, and ceiling for cleaning and good repair. So those are important to look at even in the vending area. We also have an ice machine here and First, let's look behind the ice machine, if I can shine my light for you. There is an air gap back there, just easily visible. And the actual machine, you can use your flashlight and sort of lift up the grate here and look for cleaning. If you have an alcohol swab, you can run that around the, the ice dispenser chute and see if you uh, get any kind of dirt soil off of that. <clears throat> One thing to remember about your ice makers, where ice is dispensed, it needs to dispense into something the customer is holding, but the customer should not be able to access the stored ice. So remember, any ice machine dispensing ice 
that stored ice, you cannot have just an open bin or a cooler. The stored ice has to be inaccessible to the customer or guest. And that's your vending area. Let's look at the storage room on this floor. We're gonna do an inspection and of the storage room and see what we find in here. So let's have a look inside the storage room here. We've got a housekeeping cart right here that we can look at. It's not fully stocked, but it does have some things on it that we want to pay attention to. We've got individually wrapped, the single use cups, so they are protected. They're still in their wrappers. We've got some clean towels folded and stored here. We've got garbage bags on the bottom. This is uh, either trash or probably dirty soiled linen on this end. We don't have a housekeeper right here to ask about that, but let's look. We've got some chemicals down here. Let's see what we've got. We've got a morning breeze room refresher. So the air freshener there, we've got a cream cleanser. We've got a multi-quat sanitizer. Now you remember we talked in the guest rooms about some things that needed sanitizing, the bathroom fixtures. So that sanitizer would be an approved sanitizer for that purpose. We can look at our floors, walls, and ceiling while we're standing here. We've got a little wall damage here, probably from carts being pushed into it, but it is still uh, a damage to the physical facilities. We also have a linen cart here for this floor. So we've got presumably clean linens. We've got king and queen beds, so it's labeled so the housekeepers know what to grab. We've got some paper products up here. And so everything here looks clean and separated. And the actual cart itself, we want to look at, at that for cleaning and good repair. And you can pull, lots of times there's Velcro, and you can move that around and just make sure that there's good cleaning going on there. And that is a look inside this storage room. So let's move into the laundry area. And I will tell you, this hotel does have some construction going on, some remodeling. So if we see some things that are related to that, or you hear some sounds related to that, that's what you might, uh, might hear on the video. This is a laundry chute. So soiled linens, laundry from up uh, floors above can be sent down there. We move on into this laundry room. <clears throat> We're always still looking at floors and walls and ceilings. Uh, we want to look at this little area here. They have their mop sink area. So this would typically be used for dumping mop water, cleaning out the mop buckets and cleaning the mops. We've got a system set up where they mix their chemicals. So the housekeeping staff would come and get their bottles filled here. You can see that they use uh, Ecolab chemicals. So that's where they get their sanitizer we talked about earlier. You can see test strips on the wall and information about the sanitizer. So that's all down here in laundry. That's pretty common. When you go into a lodging facility, you may not be able to see about the sanitizer, the specifics about it until you get in the laundry area. Let's look at the carts that they have for laundry. This gray cart is labeled dirty. And the rules do require that your carts that are holding and transporting dirty linen be labeled for dirty. There is not a requirement for clean to be labeled. The ones that are not labeled dirty would be assumed to be clean. This facility has some that are labeled clean you'll see in this video and they've just gone above and beyond the rules and, and added that clean labeling but we're looking for the dirty ones to be labeled and that they only hold the dirty linens and laundry we've got commercial washing machines here we are not the experts in the mechanics of these so we really just look at these for general cleaning and good repair around them it's not unusual to see uh, broken floor tiles these are very heavy machines and the installation of them they don't keep the floor tiles pristine and that's just what you're looking at here with these machines. We can move into this little storage room. It's not the storage room, I'm sorry. It is the back side of the dryers. So let's see what we have in here. So there's, there's gonna be an amount of dust and accumulation of lint that's expected because you are on the back side of commercial dryers that are running almost all the time. We have enough accumulation back here that I would say they need to clean it some. There's, there's a area here that's heavily, heavy accumulation. Um, lots of dust on that. 
So always concerned about the heat from the dryers and the lint and dust being easy to spark a fire. And looking at floors and walls and ceilings again, even in this room behind the dryers. And there are, I think, two commercial dryers out here. You can see the front. Get the light. And again, these were looking for that general cleaning and good repair. And you would have conversation with the housekeeper about how these work and how they manage when they have problems. How quickly do they get someone out to fix it? Those are conversations you might have with the housekeeping staff. And let's move around to this sink. You know, the rules require that there is a hand washing sink available for handling, for washing hands between handling soiled and clean linens. And this hand washing sink definitely serves that purpose. There is soap, there are paper towels. If they did not have this hand washing sink available for that hand washing between soiled and clean linens, there would need to be an approved hand hygiene program. And that is something that would be worked out between the management of the lodging facility and the local regulator. You can work with whatever hand sinks are nearby, whatever works for that local regulator and the management of the facility to, uh, to achieve that good hand washing between soiled and clean linens. Let's walk into the closet where there's clean linen storage and toiletries for the guest room. We've got clean linens here folded, stored on labeled shelves. We have a housekeeping cart, not fully stocked, but has a few things we can look at. We've got clean towels. Uh, folded here, obviously separate from dirty things. Trash bag over here on the dirty end. And we've got some of the toiletries up here. If you look on these shelves on this wall, more toiletries separated, stored properly. Paper products on the bottom down there. Single use cups that are still in their plastic so they are protected and that storage is fine. And then we've got clean uh, sets of a duvet cover and sheets folded and ready for use. So this facility does launder their bed covering, their duvet covers, they launder between each guest. So they've got the duvet cover and the sheets put together. That, that shelf there holds comforters that will fit into a duvet cover. And then more of the toiletries, shower curtains, they've got their shelves labeled. So in general, pretty good storage of clean linens and toiletries in this closet. We have looked in the laundry area and the linen area. We have seen guest rooms and storage areas and vending. We've evaluated everything we need to for this lodging inspection. So now it's time to write up our report, document what we observed, and go over that with the manager. I'm gonna grab my bag and I'm gonna actually do that report, go over it with the manager, and then we're gonna hang the grade card. You can see there's one posted. The old one is where it's supposed to be. We're gonna take that down and post a new one. And I'd like to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to Holiday Inn Express of Apex for allowing us to take over and film this lodging video for training. And I hope that it helps you when it's time for you to do a lodging inspection.